Okay, everybody, here we go. It is me, Gregory Manorino, pre-market report on this Tuesday, September 19th, 2023. Stick around to the end here because I want to cover something personal with all of you. And anyway, uh, I feel like we're a big family so I can share things with all of you. With that said, let's start off with with uh, something I want to read to you. And I want you to... Uh, I want you to pay attention to this. This is from Mrs. Wire. Um, and the title of this is, uh, I think, very appropriate. And these words here are, are really on point. So stay with me for a moment. Okay, here's the title. The Coming Collapse of the Global Ponzi Scheme. It goes on to say this. It won't be long before governments around the world including the one in Washington, self-destruct. Now, you know me. I like to add lib to these. I, I would say it's self-destructing right now. Uh, and that is a big sign of a... Clearly a sign that the empire is collapsing. All great empires, as in everything else in life, go through cycles, okay? And this particular one is in a downward spiral and i believe sincerely it is in collapse um anyway this goes on to say strong words but anything less would be naive as economist herbert stein once said listen to this if something cannot go on forever and this is a ponzi scheme that we're in the, of of truly beyond belief proportions uh it has a tendency to stop Absolutely. Herbert here is on point. You and I know this, okay? We've seen it before. What happened last time? The meltdown of 2008 wasn't about the economy cratering, wasn't about the stock market cratering. It was the system was locking up. It was stopping. The music was stopping. What did they do? They had to inject billions of dollars into the system to free up the credit markets. We were, it was over, all right? Um, and again, what did they do? Easy money to the point of beyond belief was pumped into the system to free it up. Inter-institution lending started and we picked this back up. Now, since that time, the Federal Reserve, none more so than the Federal Reserve, other central banks around the world, have inflated a debt market hyperbubble, which is the greatest threat to humankind, period, the end. Uh, an alternative reality has been created, and all of this is going to end. So anyway, as economist Herbert Stein once said, if something cannot go on forever, it has a tendency to stop. It's going to stop again. Uh, case in point, fiat money political regimes interventionist economies of the West are in a fatal downward spiral. Uh, yeah, I think that this short piece here, you can look this up for yourself here, nailed it to the wall. Nailed it to the freaking wall. That's exactly where we are at, people. The music is going to stop. They're trying to tell you right now how great everything is. Everything is functioning perfectly. We're firing on all cylinders. It's the same story that we've heard over and over again prior to every single meltdown going back as far as you want to go. Then they start floating out the creatures like Janet Yellen yesterday, There's, who said specifically there is no sign. No sign. She doesn't see a sign, at least. You know, she has her blinders on, quite obviously. And maybe she's a little demented. I would think that's uh, probably the case as well. Uh, and, of course, she's a liar of the highest possible order. And we know all about this as well. The fact that she says she does not see uh, a sign here that the U.S. economy is uh, <laughs> not doing too well, according to her, we're doing fantastic. You know for a fact that the polar opposite is true. Um, again, we're going to end up in a credit freeze. I've been telling you this for 10 years, people. All The music is going to stop, and I mean it's going to stop. That was the issue last time in 2008. See, they, don't, they won't tell you this. They won't tell you that the real problem wasn't the economy crashing, wasn't the market crashing, it was the fact that the credit markets were locking up. When credit markets lock up, everything stops. 
You no transactions. Debit cards don't work. Credit cards don't work. Nothing works. Well, one thing would work, and that would be cash, believe it or not, or bartering. You understand? That's why I, I, I explain to people, you need to have some cash on hand. Some, you have to, okay? In the event of a credit freeze, and in my opinion, it's unstoppable. A credit locking lockup of the system is going to occur. You will not be able to get your cash out of these institutions. Like I said, credit cards, debit cards won't work. Nothing. It'll all just stop, all right? And then you can imagine pandemonium in the streets as people... Uh, flock, uh, well, I, that, it's a bad word here, a swarm to uh, the stores here to raid them, to steal whatever they need to survive. Uh, food, uh, water, obviously, and stuff. This is how it's going to go. You have to be ready for a worst case scenario because, in my view, a worst case scenario is going to occur. Okay? And I've been telling you, people are going to eat each other in the streets. There's going to be you got to be prepared for this, people. I'm telling you right now, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but that's where we're going. And not only that, we have this growing threat against the U.S. dollar dominance. Let's put this together. A lot of you think this is not going to happen. I, I sincerely believe in my heart of hearts. Um, and it's not just... How, could I, how do I say this right? Um, I study this stuff around the clock. I think about it around the clock, except for when I'm working on my cars, obviously. Um, but it seems very evident to me that the world is sick and tired of the U.S. dollar dominance. Again, we have, think about what I'm about to say real, real quickly. We have a situation here where our so-called leaders are, which is obviously the Federal Reserve is the government, and central banks are the government around the world. What, what they're doing here, and especially with, and here's where the problem arises, being that the U.S. dollar is, as of now, the world reserve currency, okay? You have irresponsibility or something else going on um, by our, our, our political leaders, by the central banks here, debts and deficits hyper-ballooning here with easy money, Still being poured in. How is easy money still being poured in here by artificially suppressed rates? Even like this, this, well, tomorrow we're going to hear from the Federal Reserve with regard to monetary policy. Again, the world is sitting back and listening to what they're going to do here. Um, the Federal Reserve, central banks around the world, they run the economy. They run the financial markets. They run the entire financial system. They control the money. They control the world. The rest of it is a freak show. The blues, the reds, the uniparty, whatever it is, okay? Wherever you live in the world, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's the central bank setting the stage. So anyway, today starts the meeting for the Federal Reserve. Two days tomorrow, we get the monetary policy announcement. I believe they're going to raise rates 25 basis points. That's my take on it. I know a lot of you think... That's not going to happen. The most likely scenario is a rate hike, 25 basis points. I don't even believe a pause is in the cards here, especially being that last week we just found out that wholesale inflation came in more than twice than expected, not for you and I. We understand where this is going. Debts, deficits, easy money is why the dollar is under a greater threat today than ever before. And this issue with the BRICS nation cannot be overlooked. They are looking to corner the energy market, people, okay, in case you don't know. That's exactly what they, they need, and they will. They, they, there's no doubt. Without, again, the Federal Reserve is not going to give up the petrodollar that easy. They're going to sacrifice millions of lives, as they always do, um, to establish, uh, at least keep try to keep the dollar in uh, the position it has today. Uh, as the world reserve currency, they will kill millions of people to keep that going here. So just be ready for that uh, as well. But the threat, the threat to the U.S. dollar is in, is not just from the BRICS nations and their alliances that they're making now with the major energy producing countries, OPEC nations. Here, it's from within. You understand? Again, ballooning debts, deficits, easy money. This is all playing right into the threat, which is, I think, uh, clear 
to the U.S. dollar dominance. Now, what does this mean? Again, the U.S. dollar being the reserve currency has allowed people here in the United States to live an alternative lifestyle. We export, we have been exporting inflation to the rest of the world via this mechanism and the rest of the world is sick of it. We've, we've lived a lifestyle for, for decades, uh, many, many decades, uh, that we shouldn't be living in. Uh, the privilege of having the world reserve currency has allowed us this. It's going to change. And I want you to be ready for that as well. Absolutely. So again, just going back, I want you to think about what I'm, I'm saying here. Uh, it's not just the threat of the BRICS nations cornering energy, looking to circumvent the dollar, other nations around the world as well. It's the threat is from within here with debts and deficits ballooning, easy money. Uh, that is maybe even a greater danger. So just 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 understand this: the U.S. dollar is not going to remain the world's reserve currency. Uh, I don't think for much much longer. I'll be honest with you. The system is coming apart, and I think what you really need to be looking out for is this. Clearly, I mean, you know, look, I mean, this, this little thing here is we're in a fatal downward spiral. I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. I've been telling you this for a long time. It's over. Um, but anyway, uh, just just be ready for this, people. Going back to the market real quick. Um, actually, I didn't cover it at all. You have stock futures, which are slightly higher today. Risk in this market still in, in a very, very bad spot. I think the debt market is, is flashing red at this particular time without direct intervention, meaning, number one, uh, a, a suppression of the 10-year yield, uh, a weakening of the dollar, or the Fed gets in here and starts buying the market, which they do. They have a trading desk. They buy large cap stocks to prop up the market. It's just over. But the illusion of the market is more than likely going to be maintained no matter what happens until after the presidential selection cycle. This is a selection. You don't get to choose. Understand that you think you do. That is an illusion. You have no say so at all about how this is going to play out here. This is not the United States of America that you and I grew up with. Uh, things have, have changed dramatically. And I think that's pretty obvious as well. Going back to the market again, cryptocurrency is catching a bit. Gold and, gold and silver catching a bit. U.S. dollar on a relative strength basis is lower this morning. Crude oil continues to march higher. It continues to march higher. It's, it's a phenomenon that is quite unbelievable. We basically have gone straight up since $67 a barrel. We are now $93, $92, $93 a barrel. It's an amazing phenomenon to see. Um... But Saudi Arabia says that they're not cutting oil uh, production because they want to keep the price propped up. Oh, it's not that. <laughs> uh, this is obviously also part of a strategy to bring uh, the United States to its knees. Uh, Saudi Arabia now joining the BRICS nations here. They understand people here in the United States and, and, and in Europe as well, around the world. Uh, the, the, the general population is being destroyed, systematically erased, having to deal with uh, inflationary pressures across the board, food inflation, energy inflation, and outpacing it all as you and I knew it would. Um, anyway, that's 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 where, where we're going. So today is the Fed meeting, first day. Tomorrow is the announcement. You know where I stand on this. Anyway, just real quick, people, look, uh, on a personal level here, um, I, I have three dogs. And um, one of them, um, she's 16. She's not doing very well. I've spent thousands of dollars trying to prolong um, her life, but it looks like we're kind of at the end here. She's suffering, and I'm not going to allow that to happen. Um, so unfortunately, um, this is tough. It looks like um, it's time to say goodbye. So keep me in your thoughts later. Uh, I will not be doing a live stream later. I will unfortunately be um, at the vet with uh, Dolly. So please keep Dolly in your prayers. Um, it's not easy. Definitely not easy to, to deal with this, but it's part of being a responsible pet owner. We love our animals. We love our dogs. And unfortunately, we all reach this point. And it looks like we're there. All right, with that said, people, listen, um, love all of you from the heart. I mean that. I will see all of you um, in the morning. Again, no live stream today. Um, and I do apologize for that, but it's going to be impossible. 
for me to do that, okay? So take care of yourselves. Um, keep dialing your thoughts and prayers, okay? And uh, I'll see you.